Hi, everybody. Welcome to our 2021-2022 All Sports Parent Meeting. Uh, we usually meet in the gym, uh, but due to just being uh, an abundance of caution, uh, we wanted to have this virtually for you, and we're going to share the presentation on the description of this YouTube video. So links will be provided. Um, and also, you have an opportunity, which uh, Coach Person will talk about in a second. You'll be able to meet with uh, your individual coaches as well to give you more information. But today is just an overview of what to expect for sports. Um, quick introductions. My name is Ryan Main. I'm the principal of Walnut High School. And we have our athletic director, Jerry Person, who is now going to guide you through um, just expectations of what we expect for the upcoming sports season this school year. Coach P, they're all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, I just want to say uh, welcome back to everything that we're going to be doing this year. I hope it's as normal as we can make it. It is a something after a uh, after the last year we had. It's good to be back on campus with all kids, and it's good to be back in regular sports seasons. So we'll move on here, and we'll talk about those things as we go. Um, introductions. I usually have introductions for the fall, winter, and spring coaches when we do each one of these. But right now on this page, this has all of our head coaches. It has their emails. And it has when their sport is. The fall seasons run from August to about mid-November. Then the winter runs from about uh, mid-November to the end of March, into March. And then spring goes from March till the end of the year. So you see your coach on there. If you're at this one and you're seeing this right now, then it's good for all year. But uh, you know what? There's the information. We'll move on. When we get to the athletic information, basically, that we like to go over at the beginning is we like to go over the thing that we talk about. When we have this meeting, I give you a little bit of general information. Then your coaches have an individual sport meeting and they break, break off and you do that. So, uh, today, your coaches will set that meeting up with you guys because it'll be in a smaller group and uh, they will have that. When you get out of that meeting, you should have their name, obviously, their phone number and the email and how to contact them. And they'll give you their philosophies and their, their strategies, their, 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 how they run their program and that kind of thing. So you're able to ask questions at that and make sure you ask questions. And then it goes on. Now, if you if you any time during the season, because you have that information, if any time during that season you have a problem or a concern with a coach, it could be something good, it could be something bad, whatever it is then you know what? I suggest that you have your son or daughter talk to the coach. And you know what? 90% of the time, it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. And they're going to work that out with your son or daughter. But if you don't like what happened there and you think that it wasn't worked out, then you know what? It's time for you to get a hold of the coach and maybe talk to the coach a little bit and set up an appointment with yourself, your son or daughter, and the coach. And I can tell you at that point in time, you're probably going to get about 99% of your problems or your concerns taken care of. If it comes to the next step, and that is number three, if you want to, re if it's not resolved and you want to set an appointment up with myself, that would be the next step. So you would call me and I would say, okay, I'll set the appointment up with the coach and with the, uh, and with your, I mean, with you and your son or daughter. And at that point in time, we'll come up with something that is going to be amiable for everybody. But I can tell you right now, if you call and you say, hey, I have this concern, and I'll ask you first, have you talked to the coach? If you haven't, then I'm going to refer you to that point. Um, but anyway, we will go from there at that point in time. And if any time you ever want to call your coach, email your coach and say, hey, great job. I like what you're doing. That's also a great thing. Because uh, that makes coaches, I mean, that gives them a little uh, incentive and just makes them feel good. And you know what makes you feel good, too. Um, we at Walnut High School have uh, are very much proud of the fact that we are a good sportsmanship school. In other words, we practice good sportsmanship all the way throughout, from administration down to our coaches, down to our kids, down to our parents. We go on with pursuing victory with honor, which is the core values for CIF, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, good citizenship. We try to promote that in our programs. And you know what? Sportsmanship is an attitude. You have to come out and you have to understand that that's what we expect. And our coaches do, they do uh, uh, 
teach that and they want to emulate that through Walnut High School. So it's important that we have respect because you know what? We do a lot of winning. If you saw there, we have 10 league championships last year in COVID. We were the only school that had that had fielded every every sport that we had, we fielded it. We were the only one in our league that did that. And you know what? Everybody respects us in the area for our sportsmanship and for being successful. So that's something we have to look at. And uh, something you have to be concerned with when you're at a contest, don't yell at the officials, cheer your team on and make sure that you're keeping our, our, our whole uh, our whole attitude up at Walnut High School and it, and it emanates throughout what we do. Um, CIF information and college eligibility. CIF scholastic eligibility. For if you're going to be eligible to play sports, you have to have above a 2.0 grade point average. If you fall below a 2.0 grade, grade point average, then at the six week period, that's when we do all of our checks. So we have th uh, f six six week periods all the way throughout the summer, uh, throughout the school year, excuse me. But after six weeks, if you're below 2.0, then we have to check to see if you were below a 2.0 the six weeks before. If in that, fir in that first six weeks you were, or you're below a 2.0 and you weren't on the last uh, list, then you are on probation. If you were below a 2.0 on that list and the previous six weeks you were on the below a 2.0, then what happens is now you're ineligible. Now you have to wait six weeks to become eligible again. So class is very important. We, we really think that uh, uh, educational-based athletics is the way to go. And you know what? So educational-based athletics means that we have a lot of good student athletes. And student needs to come first and then athlete second. So make sure you're getting the grades. You can become automatically ineligible if you don't pass four classes, okay? If you're not passing four classes and out of those four classes, only one of those can be a PE class. So it's very important to understand that at the six-week grading period, that's when all of our eligibility to play sports is done. Can someone come off of that list in the midst of that because they might have made something up or they say, oh, now my grade at this point in time, I brought it up after three weeks, it's above a 2.0. No, you have to wait the six weeks. So that's what the CIF rule states and that's what our grading periods are. Important CIF rules, okay? Playing on an outside team is not allowed during the same sports season, you can't do that. Don't get confused. Last year during COVID, you could do that because sports seasons were kind of mixed all, I mean, were kind of bunched together. So you were able to play on an outside club team or a travel team during your season. Now you are not. If you are, we're back to the old rule. If you play on that team and on an outside team and you play however many games you played in, they're going to double that and make us forfeit games and you're going to be suspended from playing also. So it's something that you need to, you need to, it's a new, it's now back to the old rule. We had a one-time dispensation last year because of COVID. The next one that's new this year, it's not new, but the, the, uh, the uh, penalty is new. Fighting in a game or leaving the bench and fighting in a game is an automatic ejection of three to six games, depending on the severity. It's not a one game suspension anymore. If you are leaving the bench to fight or you're fighting in the field, they're going to write it up. And however bad it is, to what extent will tell us how many games are going to be suspended. CIF will give that information. On that second violation of that same rule, then you will have to be suspended for the rest of the season. If you are ejected from a contest, okay, you are out of that contest and then in the, media, the uh, next contest. The thing that has changed is that you can now go to the next contest in street clothes and be with your team. You don't have to be off of the campus away from the game itself. So that's something new. If you get ejected for anything that is found flagrant, you're gonna have to come meet with myself, with Dr. Main, and you, your, your, your son or daughter, and yourself will have to be there and we'll talk about what happened, how it happened, and how we can prevent it from happening in the future, and then we can go from there. Then I have to file that with CIF, and then they give us the okay that says you're okay, ready to go, because, because we've done that uh, consultation with you. 
the whole thing is if it happens on a day like on a Friday and we can't meet till next Monday or Tuesday, then whatever's that weekend, you're out until that meeting takes place. So you got to make sure you understand that. Touching an official, if it should never happen, but if you get into an official's face and touch him or nudge him in any way, you are banned from CIF competition for the rest of your career. On here also, we have college eligibility uh, centers that uh, you need to work with your GLC on this. The NCAA Eligibility Center and the NAI Eligibility Center, they're NCAA.org and PlayNAIA.org. Those are places you can go to if you think that your son or daughter is going to want to move on and play in college, then they need to fill out all of this paperwork and they need to get cleared through the through the eligibility center so that they are ready to go for college. They have to have so many um, core courses <clears throat> that they have to complete in high school and then they also have to meet a GPA standard and that all goes to the eligibility center and then they become eligible to be able to go on and play in college. As we get into the seasons, you're going to have kids that are going to get injured, okay? Your, your son or daughter may have an injury. It could be very minor. It could be major. It depends on what it is. Hopefully, we don't have those major ones. They're very rare. But you know what? You're going to, some injuries are going to happen. Some of them are going to be called dings sometimes. You're going to get a little ankle or twisted or something like that. It's just going to take you a little bit to get back. Well, we have a great trainer in Faith Villanueva. And her phone number is there. When you call our school, just ask for Faith Villanueva and they'll send you to her extension because she has a couple of extensions. But uh, her email address is right there, faithvillanueva at wvusd.org. Now, here's the thing. Um, that is her email address on campus for her classes and also for you if you have somebody that's injured and you want to talk to her or email her about the injury. She will talk to you in person, but right now you'll get information from her. She'll get a hold of you. If you have an injury, she will send home a sheet. She will send home information on what happened and, ha and how it can be, you know, what is going to be the protocol to get your son or daughter back. But this is that for that certain uh, situation. There's another email for clearance, okay? Athletic clearance to participate. We can't have all those participation clearances going to that same email because that's her email for class and for her injuries. So what happens is on the next page, you'll see it. But when we get there, when we get there, you'll see that there's a WHS athletic clearance dot dot org. And that's on the next. Uh, it's, it's a couple back. We can go back one, Ryan. Um, so anyway. What happens is, is you have to get an athletic clearance. You have to go to athleticclearance.com. And when you go to athleticclearance.com, you're going to get, you've already done this, most of the people in the fall, but it's kind of a mix up now because we had clearances so late. You have to have a physical. You have to turn in a, 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 some a release of liability and some waiver sheets that have to be turned in in person and that are hard copies. And then there's a lot of it on athletic clearance that you and your son or daughter have to sign off on on that. So that physical has to be completed. There is a new COVID waiver form on there also. So all of that. You also have to have insurance. If you don't have insurance, then you can purchase that through a Meyer, Meyer Stevens that we have a pamphlet for that you can get from Faith Villanueva also. So any injuries will be dealt with by Faith Villanueva, who's our trainer. She does a great job. She's awesome on campus with your kids. And she will direct you on what should be the next steps and to get your son or daughter back as soon as we can. Um, let's move on here. So now the COVID-related topics. We have COVID-related topics that we have up here. Spectators, we will have a screening. You'll have to go screening. The screening uh, QR code is on there right now, and you can look at that. That is a QR code for screening on campus to come on campus. When you come on campus, you must wear a mask. You must wear a mask on our campus. Athletes. There is one time, one time COVID symptoms form that they're going to fill out like they fill out for school. We won't be checking in every day like we did before. But that COVID form is stating that, hey, if I'm sick, that I will not come to campus. OK, and if you are sick and you need to get testing, well, we have voluntary drive through testing on Mondays from 3.30 to 5.30. And you can see that right there. Um, and it, it, you can drive through in the student parking lot. 5.30 to uh, 3.30 to 5.30, and that is where it's going to take place. If you feel you want to do that, 
okay? It's voluntary. Transportation to events, buses will be provided as normal. Last year, we had a lot of kids driving and the parents driving them to the games. Right now, we're going to do transportation as normal until we have any other type of uh, a situation that might come that we don't get to do that. Then we'll have to work at that at that time. But masks must be worn at all times on, on the buses. I want to add a disclaimer on here, too. We meet weekly with the Department of Health in our school district. Uh, so the information you're hearing now could be different uh, in two months, three months, um, more restrictive, less restrictive. Um, as you know, uh, this is what we dealt with last year. So any new information or updates that we have, we will definitely make sure we send that out to the coaches and the parents and the athletes as well. So just thank you for being patient with us, but we are definitely working with the Department of Health on a weekly basis as they give us new updates. Yes, it could be every hour. <laughs> it was every hour before, but now we're moving into a new phase, hopefully. So anyway, those are the COVID-related topics. If you have any questions at any time, please, you know, you can email me and I'll get back to you ASAP on that. Contacts you should know, your coach's name and email. When you get to, out of your meeting, you should have their name, email, and you should have their phone number that they're going to give you or anything. They might have a band, uh, like a, a, a website or a texting uh, app that you use to communicate. So those are things you should get out of that. My email is right there, jperson at wvusd.org. Please email me. I will respond to emails. I'm not always in the office for calls and then having to catch up on those. My message on my phone says, please email me and I'll get back to you quicker that way. Um, my secretary at a halftime secretary with activities and athletics is Ave Taval and her emails on there. Also, um, you can communicate with her and uh, about anything that you might want to, too. And she would refer it to me. If you something about athletics, you can refer you can email me and then I'll take care of it but she can help you too in certain situations. Then Faith's email is on there like I had before. And then like I said before, if it has to do with clearance questions, there's an email right there called whsathleticclearance at wvusd.org. And that's the way you go through that right there. And then finally a contact is a website. It's called walnutmustangathletics.com. And walnutmustangathletics.com has all our information on it for our teams, it has all our information for schedules. It has everything on there. It has scores. So all of that stuff is put on there, and you're able to go on there and see things. There's also the, the, the information on athletic clearance and other things that are on there. So if you ever have anything that you need to look up or want to look at, go ahead and look at uh, walnutmustangathletics.com, and I can tell you right now, if you'll probably get an answer to your question. If you don't, you can contact your coaches on there. They're all updated on there. And if you don't, if you don't uh, have that answer, please email me and I'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, closing out, we just want to thank you, parents. Uh, we know uh, this year there's going to be some challenges. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to fit hopefully three seasons in. Um, there will be some ups and downs, and we'll do our best to be uh, communicate anything that comes up. But like Coach Person said, the best thing we can do is uh, communicate with your coaches, communicate with us, and uh, we're excited for the upcoming season. Um, we know it's not going to be what it used to be two years ago, but we're hoping it's going to be better than it was last year. And we're, we're excited to hopefully get a, a, a sports season in for every, every one of our sports here on campus. Uh, so thank you, parents, for being so patient with us as we've been going through this. Uh, big, a big thank you to our coaches as well. Um, for sticking with us and going through this. So we're excited for the year. Come say hi to us at games. And uh, any any new information that we receive, we'll make sure we, we broadcast it, that to you as well. So thank you, Coach Person, today. Um, thank you, parents. And, and at this time, we're going to end our uh, back to sports parent meeting. And um, hopefully the next step is scheduling that individual uh, meeting with your specific sport so you can get uh, more up-to-date information from those coaches. Thank you, everybody, and have a, have a great day. Thank you.